All right. Welcome and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Songs of Psalms. We are so delighted to have you all with us today. And I want to in, uh, just welcome here Apostle Charles Salinas, who is joining us for Songs of Psalms. So finger snaps. Finger snaps for Pastor Charles. Thank you for joining us, Pastor Charles, Apostle Charles Salinas. How are you this morning? I'm very well. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation to the what I call the MRJ show or the MI, or MRJ program. <laughs> it's not the MRJ show because this is this is Jesus. He he's the one that put this up because he knows me. I wouldn't normally do this on my own willingly. <laughs> That is the truth. If I know MRJ, yes. Right? So this is the, the Jesus show. So um, I want to, I know that you're so busy and I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for you taking time from your very busy schedule to be here with us. But I, I believe that, um, that the Lord is really speaking to his people and, um, and, and just teaching us the way in which we should go. And so I wanted you to be part of this and, and have something to say because um, we need it, we need it. So I want to just give you the freedom to speak and teach and share whatever God has given you. Um, for those that are watching for the first time, we've been on Psalm 95 for quite a few weeks. Um, and I kind of feel like it's, we're kind of like, just how the Israelites were just wandering in the desert. We're just wandering around in this chapter only because there's so much that God, I believe, is trying to teach us and correct in us and renew in us so that as a people, we can step up into the places and the position that he has for us, the authority that he has for us, that that is required of us to, to live in the promised land. And so, um, so I'll just stop it at that. Pastor Charles, feel free to just to jump in here. Well, thank you again for just giving me this time, this platform, just to be here and just to minister to God's people. Um, it's it's um it's a privilege to always talk about the Word of God and had an awesome time in prayer, five thirty a.m. prayer. Um, for those that um, don't have a time of prayer in the morning as a corporate in a corporate setting we're always open to come and join us in prayer um uh, if you need a link i will send you a link just send me a message i will send you a link but today um we had an amazing time in in prayer and the lord brought us back to a place of repentance as repentance brings um, reconciliation and then reconciliation brings God's favor God's grace and sometimes we're stuck in one place because we haven't um, repented on things because we feel like oh we've arrived you know it's just our human nature just to think we made it or we measure our lives compared to the lives of other people and say well, I'm not too bad. I'm pretty good. You know, compared to someone else, my life is pretty well. And that's not the mindset of the king. That's our human mindset. And we have to change our um, human mindsets to the king's mindset. Like, it's either his mind over us or is our minds trying to govern the king and we know that we're never going to be able to govern the king he has complete authority so god brought us back to repenting like understanding that repentance is every day you know even with our thoughts we we sin we all have fallen short we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god is what the word of god says that's a con on a continual basis. So God brought us back to like, you know what? Every day you need, you need my grace. Every day you need to repent. Every day you need to forgive. Because if you can repent quickly and you could 
um, forgive quickly, then the favor of the Lord will come upon you quickly to move you and catapult you into your destiny, into your promised land. Right? There will be no hindrances for you to enter in. The Bible says in, the, in, in Psalms 95, towards the end, the rest of God. Right? His rest. Like, what is his rest? And um, I believe uh, people, the people of God must understand what is the rest of God. For the children of Israel, the rest of God was the promised land, right? It was the promised land. It was a location. It was a, a physical location. It was Canaan. It was the, 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 the land filled with milk and honey. But for us, it's much more than that. And it's already been purchased for us. We just have to enter in. And, and I believe if we go to the, I, and I, I'm pretty sure, right? You, you've read this scripture over and over again. But can we, do we have time to read it one more time? Yes, please go ahead. So let me just put my glasses on because Jesus, not use glasses. You know, you know, glasses make you look smarter, right? So oh, it's all good. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so it says in Psalms 95, 1 through 11, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. And I'm reading out of the NLT version. Says, let us come to him with thanksgiving. And that, you know what? That reminds me of, of in the creation when it says let us make man let us you know it's it's not you know it's not david here this is not david this is not this is not you know the writer you know moses or no this is this is the lord this is the father son and holy spirit saying come come to me it's like come come to that place of of repentance of changing your mind of you know Dropping your ideologies and your theologies and everything that you acquired here on earth and come to me and let us sing to the Lord, right? He's inviting us. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Sing to me. Let us shout joyfully. Shout joyfully to me because I am the rock of your salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Come to me. This is a secret. This is a mystery. Right? You, if you come to him with these ingredients, you're going to get success, guys. And that that final ingredient, right, is like Thanksgiving. Thank him for the things that you see, but especially for the things that you can't see yet. Thank him. Thank him in advance. Lord, I thank you for my healing. Lord, I thank you for my children. I don't, uh, Lord, it seems like they, they're, they're drifting away, but I thank you, Lord, for their salvation. I thank you, Lord, for my career. I, I have not entered in yet. I thank you, Lord, for my career, not my job, my career, the, the, what you've called me to do. I thank you for the ministry you've called me to, to be involved in and the calling that you have for me. Maybe I'm not there yet. God is speaking to some of us. You're not there yet. You didn't reach the promised land yet. You will only reach the promised land if you enter into a place of thanksgiving. And that's the place of, listen, that's the place of grace, guys. That's the place where you, you understand that it's not about you. Nothing is about you. Nothing is about your actions. All you have to do is believe. If you have anything to do with it, it's about your faith. It's about your obedience. Right, you just saying yes to God, but everything else is the Lord. It's because of Him, and the root of it is Him, and it's cemented on Him. It's it, it, it's in Him. Everything that we are, everything we have, everything we are is in Him. It, but it starts with those ingredients of worship, and worship is truly just thanksgiving, just just thanking the Lord, just saying, Lord, thank you. And it continues to say, let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. Like kind of saying, listen, if you can do this, then you're going to see God's greatness. You want to see God's greatness in your life? 
Like, listen, worship, worship God. And I'm not just talking about just, you know, songs, even though it's saying, sing to me, right? It's saying, let's shout joyfully. He's saying all these things, but I believe he's also calling us to a, a lifestyle, a life change. You know, he's calling us to, how are we treating our brothers and sisters? How are we caring for the poor? How are we caring for those in need? Are we going to, to the hospitals and visiting the sick? Are we going out to the streets and, and, and being part of, of people's lives and doing life with them? That's, you know, that's a song unto the Lord. Song, it, it's a melody unto God. When you can truly like love people, that he loves us. It's a song unto the Lord, it's a melody, it's a shout unto God. It's like, it's like a trumpet being sounded in heaven. And you can truly like love someone, especially those that don't love you, don't care about you. Uh, that's that's that that's that place of grace, right? Yeah. He shows it to us. He reveals it to us. You know, he offers it to us. But now we have to offer it to other people. God gives us grace, and now we have to give back grace. As for the Lord is great, He's a great King of all gods. He holds He holds in His hands the depths of the earth. And the mightiest of mountains. I love that. You know why? Because all through the Bible, like he, God just reveals himself and he kind of like, you know, he speaks of his resume. Yes. I oh, love that. I love that. But it's like, it's, this is who you're dealing with here. I don't know if you really know who you're dealing with and you know who you, that who you're coming to and who you're singing to, singing to the God God of all gods, the great king above all gods, and the Lord who is great, and he holds in his hand the depths of the earth, the mightiest of mountains. Kind of like saying, so if you know that, why are you not worshiping? Like, why are you not giving me? Why are you coming to me like all oh, sad and depressed and sorrowful and doubtful and fearful oh come to me with a with a grateful thankful heart with a happy heart because you understand who i am you understand my resume you believe in my resume you believe what i have to offer and i have everything to offer my god god is so good and it says the seas belong to him for he made it his hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. And I will ask you today, would you listen to his voice today? doesn't matter what happened yesterday. God is just saying, would you just listen to me today? Like, his mercies are made new every day. Every day. And don't harp over what happened yesterday. And let me say this prophetically for those that are listening to me. You need to forgive yourself. You need to repent of one thing. Not being able to forgive yourself and accusing yourself and being ashamed of certain things that have happened in the past. God says, God says, today is a new day. Just, just call on me. Just believe me today. For I, I will lead you into the place of grace. I would lead you to the promised land. I will lead you to a place of rest. Your soul hasn't been resting. Your soul has been so, so tormented. Father, speak to them. Touch them right now. Your soul, your mind has been guilty. And God does not call you guilty anymore. He, he calls you redeemed. He calls you restored. He sees you in a whole different way. He doesn't see you the way you see yourself. 
And God is saying, turn away from that. Repent, turn away. Turn away from that. Because you are, in that moment that you, that you turn away and you turn the corner, you will receive and you will know in your heart that you have been reconciled with the Lord. In that very moment, the favor, the grace, and the love of God will continue to flow in your life. And you will not feel stuck anymore. You will not feel hindered anymore. You will not feel back anymore. You will now start walking towards, towards the prom your promised land. It's a continual place. It's not just you arriving. It's somewhere, it's a place of continuation. It's, it's, a, it's a place of continuance. It's non-stopping. It's the, the throne room of grace. Throne room of grace. I want to continue by saying the Lord says, don't harden your hearts as Israel did in Meribah. As they did in Massa in the wilderness. You know what Meribah and Massa? Meribah and Massa was that place, like, you know, that the children of Israel were, you know, they, they were very upset. They were like, you know, crumbling within themselves. And like, oh, we want water. Hey, we what is going on here? Like we want, we want manna, you know, we want real food. We want, we don't want to just eat bread every day. We want, you know, they were seeing the miracles and wonders of the Lord. And then they had the, the audacity, right? Just complain and, and say, Lord, it's not enough what you've shown me. It's not enough that you've been God, that you've been great in my life. I want more. And you're in, in the way you, you bring it about. Your condition, your posture before the Lord has, is totally erroneous. Some people come grumbling. Some people come, you know, doubtful and fearful. Like your posture and your demeanor is everything to the Lord. Like you must come before the Lord faith and understanding who he is but this place of Meribah and Masa was that place where Moses said okay you know what and that's the place where Moses sacrificed his inheritance for the people of Israel it's a place of sacrifice guys it's a place of surrender is a place of not thinking of yourself but thinking of others rather than yourself and he said okay hit the rock the moment he hit the rock, water gushed out. They were able to drink. But even then, they weren't satisfied because the water that they needed was not a natural water. It was the water of the Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that they needed. It was God himself that they needed. And even though they were alive, they didn't, they, they, I guess they didn't realize, look, we've been in, we've been in the wilderness for 40 years. And we haven't needed anything. That like God has been our water. He's been our He's been our our food. He's been our He's been our our, our, our wardrobe. He's been everything. That still wasn't enough to believe God completely. And maybe you're there in that very moment, right there, in, in that very moment in your life where God has done amazing works. And some way, some down, some way, somehow down the road, you find yourself grumbling within yourself your attitude your posture you know, you've seen the glory of God in the past and God doesn't want it to stay in the past he wants it to be right here in the present but you've seen it and now within your heart you find yourself you know kind of complaining and doubting God after you've seen the hand of God time and time and time again in your life and God is saying, get out of that place. Turn away from that place. As he says, for, their, for, their, for your ancestors tested and tried my patience. Even though they saw everything I did. Wow. We be in that place right now? Because, you know, history repeats itself. Could he be really... 
the may may it be that the reason why we're still in Psalms 95 and we can't move out of there is because something within us and God knows our hearts. Listen, there's no one that knows us better than the Lord and we won't be able to move forward until we get it right right now. In this very moment, in this very in this very topic, this very thing that the Lord wants us to, to overcome because you might be in that very place where the Lord has had patience and is and and is still having patience with you because he's saying you tested me you tried my patience and even though you saw everything I did for 40 years right for a long time God just just revealed himself and we still have doubts we still have insecurities and we have to kind of question ourselves and discern and examine our hearts right like like david always would say to the lord lord examine my heart now we have the power through the holy spirit to examine our heart right god holy spirit will examine our heart but we have authority to say i give you permission lord to examine my heart what is in my heart what has turned me away from you what has turned me away from believing you wholeheartedly even though you've shown me everything if you even though you've revealed yourself mighty in my life and your hand has been upon my life and my children's life and now i'm in this this situation i'm in this moment in my life something happened there was a, a monkey wrench thrown at you and you're gonna and you're gonna disbelieve or you're gonna you're gonna lack faith you're going to lack strength. You're going to lack courage. You no, know, the Lord is calling you back to worship. The, the Lord is calling you back to praise like in the beginning. The Lord is calling you to believe the things that are not as though they were. He's calling you to thank the Lord even when you don't see anything. Because this is the hour and this is the generation that, that God is seeking. He's seeking true worshipers, true worshipers. That will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you. It says for 40 years, I was angry with them. And I said, they are a people whose hearts turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us if we continually refuse. With our mouths, we we say we love God, but with our hearts, we refuse to love him fully. Father, forgive us where we refused. Forgive us where we've rebelled. Forgive us where we've turned away from you. Today, we repent. We repent of our shame. Yeah. We, repent, we repent of our guilt. We repent of all the lies that the enemy has placed in our minds to think that we don't deserve God's love. And we enter into a place of forgiving ourselves and also forgiving others. And we are reconciled. We are, we are turned back to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because in that very moment, Lord, you bring us back to that place. You bring us to that place of continual rest. Continual rest is not a... It's not a place anymore. Jesus is the re is our rest. His grace is our rest. So he says, and it ends. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Mm. We thank the Lord that Jesus paid the price for that never to happen again. We have all authority and all freedom we can come boldly the bible says before the throne room of grace there's nothing stopping us from repenting today turning away from our sin turning away from our error turning away from our doubt coming and reconciling with god as a matter of fact you are already reconciled with god you just don't know it you just don't believe it because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not the truth. It's just your reality. Your reality is that you feel, you go by feelings. Mm -hmm. 
rather than truth. But the truth is that Jesus paid the price so that humanity can be reconciled back to God. And some choose to believe it, some choose not to believe it. But I pray that today you will make a choice. You are already reconciled. Because if you believe, then you will enter into continual rest. And I can take you, I don't know if we have time. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about the rest, right? Let's go, yeah, let's go there. Hebrews 4, for those that are following along. And if you've been leaving comments, thank you so much for your comments. We see them. We appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for drawing your ear to hear the word of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about God's rest. It says, let us fear, let us fear then. Though a promise of entering his rest is left open, some of you would seem to have fallen short. But we also have good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the word they heard did not help them. And he's talking about the children of Israel. He's talking about that generation, that people, because they were not unified with those who listened in faith. But we who have trusted are entering in that rest. Again, verse three, for we who have trusted, in order to enter God's rest, you must trust the Lord. And if you can trust the Lord, listen, that is a sweet smelling aroma unto the Lord. That is fragrance unto the Lord. That is worship unto the Lord. That is a shout, a, a, that is a greater shout of any hallelujah that you can give here physically on earth. That is you understanding that he is the rock of your salvation. He is. For we have, for we who have trusted are entering into that rest. It's just as God has said, when my wrath, I swore, they should never enter my rest, even though his works were finished since the foundation of the world. But somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, they shall never enter my rest. So then it remains for some to enter into yet into it. Yet those who formerly had good news proclaimed to them did not enter did not enter because of disobedience. Verse 7 says, again, God appoints a certain day. And he says, today. Bang. Through David, after so, so long a time, just as it has been said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken for another day later on. So there remains a Shabbat rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered God's rest has also seized from his own work, just as God did from his own. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one may fall through the same pattern of disobedience. Verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing the right through, through to a separation of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Verse 13, No creature is hidden from him, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Verse 14, therefore, since we have a great Kohen Jadol, who had, which is a high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Yeshua ben Elohim, 
let us hold, let us hold firmly to our confessed allegiance as powerful. Verse 15 says, for we do not have a Kohen Godot, again, a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all in all the same and all the same ways, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near to the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in time of need. Like it's already done for you. you paid the price. The high priest, Jesus, our high priest, paid that, paid that price for you now not to enter a location. We don't want to just go to Jerusalem. I love Israel. I love it. But that's not, Jerusalem is not the promised land. <laughs> Jesus, Yeshua, his grace, everything that he, that he has, and he is his ways that's our rest but we have to lay down our work and trust in his work it's not our work not what we do here on earth not the hustle and bustle of work or ministry is what he paid what he, the work that he did the work that he did carry that heavy cross for us it's being beaten for us into to unrecognition for us, bleeding until he couldn't bleed anymore, being crucified on the cross for us. That's the work. Dying for our sins and that blood, it still has the power to clean us, cleanse us, and restore us. And the work of the work of his death, because there is power in his death. And there is power in his resurrection. And everything within him, there is power. So we have to choose. We choose We choose his work. Or we, do we choose ours? Do we trust him? Or do we continue to trust ourselves? We have, there's a choice in this. And if we understand, and if we choose Jesus, our, our eternal rest, then from, from the depths of you, listen to me, from the depths of you, not from your surface, not from if something good happens to me, I praise him. Not if I, I you know, I get a good job, I praise him. Not if you were in, you're in a good relationship, you praise him. Or you, you have the big house, you praise him. No, you praise him and you worship him because you trust him at all times. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what's happening around you, you choose to trust him because you understand that he is your eternal rest. That the work has been done for you. And that he loves you and cares for you. Like he said that he that he does in, in Psalms 95. He takes care of you. He, 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 hasn't, he hasn't forgotten you. So I pray. I pray today. That we would decide today to choose enter his rest truly and we would choose to repent of the things that we need to repent of and i feel like the lord is pressing repent of not being able to forgive yourself certain things in your past that the enemy still tries to bring to your present Re repent turn away from those things god does not look at them he does not condemn you he does not judge you for those things as a matter of fact he has completely completely taken it out of his mind why is it still in your mind and be reconciled because see in that moment what the lord showed me this morning is those are the people that put walls up and they can't forgive because they can't forgive themselves they can't forgive others in a continual place of shame and condemnation. And God wants to break down those walls of condemnation and separation and reconcile, reconcile us back to him. 
And when we are reconciled back to him, we are entering his rest. What is his rest? It is Jesus. Amen. It is Jesus. But it's everything about Jesus. It's like when the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Who is the righteousness? King Jesus. And all things, all things shall be added unto you. That's the rest. That's his rest. His rest is all things added unto you. Not so attracted well, I give God glory for your life and I bless you I encourage you enter his eternal rest that was provided for you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through his sacrifice for our lives amen <clears throat> wow Thank you, Pastor, Apostle Charles. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so good. And, and we needed to hear that. Abby says, love you, PC. <laughs> love you, APC. We have to put the A in there now. <laughs> um, and I, I loved how the Lord um, truly brought it all home because yeah, it, it's about repentance and and I do believe that that is why people get stuck and wander in life. It's because when you don't come to the Lord fully and surrender your heart and your mind and your will and your thoughts and all of that, um, you will wander and, and you can't live an effective life for the kingdom of God. And so learning to forgive ourselves is truly the, the, the key to then being able to walk in that in the blessing of the lord and then you then you can serve other people you can't serve other people if you're broken and wounded and so i want to thank you for sharing that and for allowing the spirit of god to um to to reveal that to us today so thank you for that um i would i would love for you to stay with us here but i i think you did a, an amazing job that perhaps maybe we'll i'll see how the lord leads us we can move now move in move into the next song <laughs> um but we've been on here for a while because yes there, there's mindsets that the lord has to break and that was and that was it not trusting the lord seeing what he's done and still not trusting him um so that was that was another key thing that you spoke today so thank you can you just not trusting really... god for your own life not trusting god for your own not trusting god that not, uh, not condemning you. He's not judging you. He's not looking at you like you look at yourself. Yes. God's saying, stop. Don't, don't do that. His heart breaks for us when he sees us not functioning in, in how he intended for us to function. His heart breaks when we're not we're not walking and running in the purpose that he has set for us to walk in. There's a purpose in our lives. And the purpose goes back to what? To worship. We were created to worship him. We were created to give him everything and to trust him, lay down our lives so that he can live through us. So, uh, God is just encouraging all of us. I believe that. Amen. He's, he's speaking deeply to us because we are living, we are living, you know, some, some difficult days and we don't know. We don't know when the, when the, the coming of our Lord, of our King, you know, is, but it's near, it's close. And we have to prepare. We have to get our, get our lives right. You know, like, like the Bible declares in Luke chapter, well, get it right. Get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, get on the right road. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. But just understand that he wants to walk. He wants to walk with us. That road with, with us, like with him. It's, it's his road. It's his way. It's his life that he wants to give us. And it's his truth. So I encourage everyone that's that's watching and listening. Um to repent and be reconciled to the Lord 
move forward. Move on, move in God's favor. The favor of the Lord is over your life. The moment that you uh, you choose you choose God and you turn you turn towards Him. Amen. Pastor uh, Charles, can you just um, have a quick prayer over the people? Just release a blessing over them. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, I just ask you, even right now, that you would just continue to touch your people, continue to, continue to convict your people. Not con you will never condemn them you will convict them of their error i thank you for your conviction i thank you we thank you for the conviction of the holy spirit because it brings us to the place of righteousness right standings with god not because of what we've done it's because of what we of whom we believed in there's a time where we thought all oh, righteousness is that I have to be in right standings with God. And I've even, I, I've had to ask God for forgiveness for preaching that being in right standings is on, uh, is according to what I do right or wrong. And it's not, it's according to what he's already done for us in the, uh, in Calvary, what he's already accomplished his work, his work. God, we ask you that you will bring revelation to your people that are walking in condemnation, that are walking in shame, that are walking in guilt, and they haven't said anything. They've kept it to themselves. It's, they've been secretly suffering. They've been secretly crying out to you. They've been saying, Lord, I need this out. Lord, why is this happening to me? Why are these things occurring? Lord, and you're crying out to the Lord, and the Lord says, you're happening because you're condemning yourself. You're still in that place of shame. When God, when I have called you to be in my place of rest, you're continually working and trying to strive to be right and trying to, uh, you're, you're, you're striving to be holy. When I said you are holy already, be holy for I am holy. You're trying to do something that I already did for you on the cross. You must go into a place of trust, truly believing God, surrendering everything to him to your creator, the one that knows you more than you know yourself, surrendering to, to him and saying, Lord, I surrender to you. I, I renounce to my doubt and my shame and my guilt and everything of me. And I surrender to you, the only one that's true, the only one that's faithful, the only one that's worthy of praise and worship, the only one that's worthy of honor. Come back to you, God. I'm reconciled back. I reconcile my life back to you. And I thank you, Lord, that in this very moment, in this very moment, there's people praying with me. And God is breaking chains. I, I sense the Holy Spirit breaking ideologies, breaking even religion and tradition and everything that held you back and those traumatic experiences. He's breaking them. He's destroying them. I pray in the name of Jesus that when this prayer is over, everything that you were carrying with you would have been lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. And that from this moment on, you will enter his continual, his everlasting rest, which is Christ Jesus. The hope of glory His hope for you. Not only today, tomorrow, and forever. Father, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. And we thank you for your freedom over your people. I declare freedom right now. Freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. There's people being set free right now. There's people being delivered right now. There's people being healed right now. I just sense the Holy Spirit healing you right now. Right in this very moment, he's healing you. He's restoring you. And he's telling you it's a new day. Today, today is a new day. His mercies are made new today for you. God, we thank you. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your eternal rest in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now go ahead, you guys, and conquer your day in faith, in victory, in the name of Jesus. Thank you.
Thank you, Apostle, for being here with us today. We are so blessed for this word. Thank you for being used of God to bless us and to instruct us and to just fill us up with the with the power of God in our lives. And I want to say to you, um, yeah. Mark, hey, don't don't stop what you're doing with this. Whatever whatever has to you know be put aside or be this this is where. You know, God, God wants this for you, like early in the mornings, not only for you, but for others, so whatever you have to do, whatever you have to move around, do it. God is calling you complete obedience. And this, this is going to, because this is going to be big. This is going to grow. Women, men, families, young adults, children, even young people, children, they all need to hear this. So continue working at it. I, I declare the favor and the grace of God over over what you're doing in this platform. It's gonna excel, it's gonna grow, it's gonna grow dramatically. And Amen. God bless you. Love you much. Amen. I love you too. Thank you, Pastor. Um, let me just put the blessing on your on the people of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you shalom. Blessings to everyone. Love you, Pastor. God bless you guys. I'll see you all here back next week. We may, who knows? Maybe we'll get Pastor Charles back. Who knows? You never know. <laughs> so clear your schedule. If, if I got to do this, then guess what? You got to help me do it too. In Jesus' name. <laughs> all right. God bless everyone. Ciao.